night. Hi, everybody. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to Mean Girls Interrupted. Welcome. Is, yes. To, yeah, welcome. Yes, welcome. And uh, this is uh, a, a movie review podcast yeah. uh, starring Travis Seal. And John Higgins. And uh, yeah, I'm John. We're, we're saying, yeah, I was going to say, we're saying each other's <laughs> names. I'm Travis. And uh, what oh, the hell? Oh, ooh, phone. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. Hold up. Does it work? It is work. Oh, I knew it was going to be work. Uh, who me, who can't keep, relate to work? Keep a, I don't understand. I have my phone on silent. Give me one second. Go ahead and keep talking. And I okay. just have to text them so quick. Sure. But I'm into like the drama of like work contacting you off hours at yeah, 6, yeah, yeah. 6 p.m. your time. How dare they? Yeah, so this, yeah, is yeah. The, this is the portion of the show where we talk about boundaries. And we do it every week. Well, this person probably might need my help because they're mm. like freshly, uh, they're like fresh meat. Oh, do we need to stop? No. <laughs> you're like, you're going to learn on your own. We're no, going to throw totally... you into this pool and you're going to sink or you're going to swim. Yeah, no, it's totally cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like um, uh, somebody who also uh did not swim was somebody inside this movie we're going to talk about yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 anatomy of a fall yes we're uh, talking about that movie for all of you out there who don't know i think it premiered at the 76 uh can 70, can and 76. it won the palm door which is like not a door made of palm oh it's just i mean it is it is a prize. It's very misleading. <laughs> I thought so. I was like, oh, they get a whole palm door. As a prize. And, yeah, as a prize. They should, honestly. <laughs> like, why don't they make stuff out of palm trees? I think I think some people do. Yeah? Sure. Like somebody's, palm wood? Somebody's got to be using it for something. Uh, yeah, like filler. Let's just like the filler queen of the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Filler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all pomp no circumstance and uh so yeah anatomy of the fall is what we're talking about today and we are i feel like we're in prestige season peak prestige season and i feel like the last few episodes we've just been like doing like prestige stuff and whatnot we and have unintentionally actually yeah yeah because that's all yeah. that's out there right now i mean <laughs> It's at this point, it's kind of the only thing worth watching. Yeah. And uh, I, um, I think this movie was definitely a hit in, in lots of regards, critically. Do you want to say how much it cost? How much? Did uh, this cost? Oh, do you don't have that breakdown, do you? I have how much it garnered box office wise in the U.S., oh. Okay. Which is not a lot, actually. Uh, it was three point eight million dollars, is what it grossed. Um, it's a French language, or it's a French language film with some German sprinkled on all, all up in there, and English. In English, yeah the the common denominator internationally for languages. Yeah, we have English, German, and French. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So if you like all of those things, this is the movie for you. It is the movie for you. And if you like courtroom drama. This movie's not short on courtroom drama. That is for <laughs> sure. It's a mystery. It's a thriller. It's a crime. It's oh, a drama. Speaking of courtroom drama. What? I forgot to tell you that I was called for jury duty. Great. I didn't get released. I actually had to go in the morning. I had to take a day off of work to go in the morning. You did that too. I've done that before. Yeah, here. Yeah. I did get you released. Did? I did get released. So did though. I. It was like the it was the worst and best day of my life. Can I tell you? Yeah. That after they released me, I was like, wait, this is only going to be one day trial. Here's the thing. I didn't yeah. know they picked you when the trial started. I yeah. no idea. <laughs> I had no clue how the process was. They pick you, trial starts. And I was mm. like, oh no. And then they said it's only one day. And then they gave us the circumstances. And the defendant was defending themselves. No lawyer present. And I was like, this is going to get so messy. You I kind of wanted to be there. Wanted to be there. And mm. I didn't get to be. What That's a bummer. Because and you get no pissed. context, though, of like no. what it's going to be. How did you get that context of them? 
uh, like going to be depend- defending themselves? Like, how did who told they you were, that? They were there. The judge was there with the defendant and the pro- and the prosecuting side. Oh, and the and so the defendant sitting there and she's helping pick her own jurors. Really? Yes. And there was like thirty two of us there, and they only needed six. And I was like, wait, doesn't a jury require twelve? I, I have no clue how any of this works. Clearly, that's crazy. Um, I think I know. I feel like one side picks. I don't know. Maybe one side picks six. The other side picks six. No, and it makes they twelve. Pick, they picked six. They called the names of the six people, and I was like, "Oh Lord!" I said, "They've gotten halfway through. My odds are good not to be here, but also yeah. there's a chance they could." And then the uh, uh, lady goes, "That's it." And I was, "Were like, you in the courtroom?" Yeah. All of us were in the courtroom. That sounds so backwards, backwards, because you, you get to see who's there. It was so weird. Like, what if you knew the person? Well, they asked in the beginning, they said, do you know either of these two people? Do you know any of their relatives? And it just went on them asking the most insane questions to all 32 of us. That's really stressful. You know what? You know what happened to me whenever I went to jury duty here in Los Angeles? I slept all the way to downtown. I sat in, well, I signed, I sat, I stood in this really long line. Oh. There were there were like maybe 50 of us in this like waiting room. And just nobody speaking to each other, just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then maybe after about two or three hours, they they called the people based off of their profiles that we registered with. Yes. And then they released everyone else. They gave us no context to the crime, but they did mention that this was going to be like a week's long um, uh, trial. That's probably why you got zero context. Yeah. It's like at that point, I'm like, is this a murder trial? I kind of want to be here. But like, uh, What goes on for weeks here in Los Angeles? (laughs) Yeah. They gave us, beforehand this all happened with yeah. d- the defending side with That's the so side weird. it was so bizarre because i was like is this really like are we is learning like how to do this to, it was like, like we were guinea pigs to that day was the trial okay we, we were um what what would you call us we sacrificial were sacrificial lambs we were sacrificial lambs we were the um we were the test subjects yeah. we were the um what what do you call it when you're doing an experiment and you have to have the one that's like um like the placeholder for all of the other parts? Um let's you know see what I'm here. talking about. Uh the filler queen. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> this this episode's called Filler Queen. We were the filler queens. But after I kind of found out the context and knew that the person was going to be defending themselves while there was a lawyer on the other side, I was like, mess. No. A mess. This will be a one day trial and they will be sentenced to death. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy. I anatomy of a fall, happened. everyone. Yeah. Jury duty sucks, but I think it could be cool if it were the right thing. Yeah, I guess if so. it's not too long, if it's not too long, listen, I can do one day. I'll do yeah. one day. And then you have somebody's life in your hands. Right. Yeah. What if I don't even like if even look? if it's just like a traffic thing, like a major traffic thing, you still have your li- their life in your hands. It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever they have to do or however their life is affected by it, it's like totally up to you. And yeah. I feel like that's not right. <laughs> John, people are notoriously petty. Yeah, they are. They are, especially jurors. Oh, when you get a when you get a group of people there who are like, I hold all the power. Yeah, you know, that is just you're just asking to create one monster. These are normal people without an ounce of power in their lives. And you give them this one little tiny kernel. They're going to go crazy. They're going to go ham, John. They're going to honey bake that bitch. It is (laughs) going. I don't even know what the outcome was, but I was like, yeah, well, maybe one day I'll know. What's funny about it is like, you know, context and like you can search it. Can. And I will eventually. Huh. But you know what? I don't think there was. I, I feel like this. There was a jury in this movie, but you didn't really see them much. You saw them kind of kind I, of. Can I tell you something? I have to. I really have to get this off my chest. <laughs> Why do courtrooms 
looks so dingy. How much money They're goes old. to this system? Yeah. You, you want to know what? I know a ton of old people who have had their faces fixed. Yeah. Go fix the inside of that damn courtroom, <laughs> girl. That carpet's gross. We need modern <laughs> courtrooms. How, how, do you, how do your chairs not have cushions? How do the chairs not have cushions? And also, how does like like putting on well in the context of this put movie, some like, lipstick on putting on a robe oh. and a wig and a whatnot is it's never a great look and it feels like you're just in a community theater play they all looked like they were part of a cult just different opposite yeah. sides of a cult fighting yeah that's well, a government could be our it could be arguably a cult oh it is for sure i don't even yes. know if we have to argue that it could be <laughs> Yeah, a comment down below. Let us know what you yeah. think in the comments below wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, especially in this election year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. talk about it. No, we're not because we're not a political podcast, everybody. You <clears throat> do whatever you want to do, BB girl. Yeah, you do your thing and then you come to us and you enjoy your gay stuff. Speaking of gay stuff, uh, welcome. Gay stuff. Yeah, some gay stuff released on Friday, everybody. Oh, what was it? Mean Girls? Ari, uh, mean Girls and Ariana's <laughs> new song. Oh, I didn't listen to it. Yeah, it's called Gay Awakening. She has a song called Gay Awakening? <laughs> no, it's called Yes And, but it oh. should be called Gay <laughs> Awakening because somebody who listened to that song, some little gay boy or girl who heard the yeah. song and watched the video. They're like, yes, and. They said, oh, yes, weird. and. They're like, yes, and I'm a homosexual. They won't even know. Until they know. They and that's know. why um, Anatomies of a Falls mm -hmm. um, of, uh, is, is a movie that is about a murder. Ish. And there is a gay dynamic in there. There is a gay dynamic. So we're still on theme. Yeah, we're still totally on theme. And so it, it stars um sandra hewler um playing somebody named sandra voider <laughs> so, um and uh vincent oh swan arland that's a hot name swan uh he's the pointy french guy uh named <laughs> his real name is vincent renzi he, he is plays pointy, a lawyer huh? Yeah, the lawyer. He's very pointy. Pointy and villainous, but not. Do you know who he movie. looked like a little bit? Hmm. Tilda. He was giving some Tilda Swinton. He was giving Tilda Swinton. Yeah. Tilda Swinton with like a Moriarty mustache. Um, oh, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. And, <laughs> and then and then a, a a small a small child named Milo, um, who plays Daniel. And uh he honestly missed opportunity. He should have played a character named Otis. <laughs> yeah. Who is a dog. <laughs> and uh, there is also a dog in this movie who steals the show. And um, I, it's not on the Rotten Tomatoes, but I did look into it. That dog's real name is Merci, which is oh, thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat> well, thank next. you, Merci. Yeah, thank you. Next, Ariana Grande. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. References all mm -hmm. day. Grande, funnily enough, fun fact, is not a French name. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, this movie, how would you say this movie starts? Well, it starts, it starts with a runtime of <laughs> two hours and 30 minutes. Did you think that was a necessary runtime? I mean, to be honest, I wasn't bored. I wasn't so, bored either. I was fully interested, except so I did I was fall asleep. <laughs> so not fully interested, <laughs> but interested enough. No, I was interested enough, but it, we started it pretty late. And like, yeah. like it starts to get into a lot of words. Oh, and like a lot of reading words. And John, at that point, I was like, is, I'm closing my eyes and going to bed. It is wordy. Yeah, Talk yeah. about opening a book and all of those words jumping off the page. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of. It's like um, verbal assault at some point because you're like, will you guys ever stop talking? I will say no, that it's, it's it is a, a bare, courthouse. So yeah. there is talking involved. But John, how many monologues did these people have to memorize? Yeah, in German and well, French, German, English with accents. 
Yeah. Um, all across the board. But this movie starts with Sandra. Sandra, Sandra. Um, she's she's flirting up a storm with like a student who's like interviewing her, and she's just like, Yeah, we're drinking in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. And then her husband uh starts playing really loud music of 50 cents. It was 50 cent, wasn't it? Yes. Which is an interesting choice. Very, <laughs> very much so. And I was the, wondering the whole time why. They never say why and they never call it into question. Well, if you think it was the only song they could license? I don't know. It feels like a choice. Uh, it had to have been. Uh, clearly, it was a choice, but also like, couldn't there have been another choice? <laughs> like we're, we're talking about these characters are extremely like literary and like educated and I would say pretentious people. There's no way an old, old song from 50 Cent is on his playlist. And she did mention him really liking the beat and he does make music. So I think he was up there creating his own remix of it. Oh, like he got the stems to the song was like doing a thing. Yeah, but at he's least like, I think. But he's like uh, allegedly drowning out the sounds of his wife flirting with a person downstairs. Yeah, and down below. Yeah. And so she gets annoyed that the student leaves and then she goes on upstairs, which starts to go on upstairs. And then we cut to the boy. And he's the on dog. a walk. He's They're on a walk with walking. the dog. Yes. And um, did you get that the that the the kid was um, visually impaired? Not until later. I was looking at his eyes at one point, and I said, "This is a white walker." And then, yeah. I, and I was like, "How are his eyes so blue?" I was like, "Yeah, pale eyes, good for you. You're going to yeah, do but, well in life, sir." But in the beginning, I had yeah. no clue who was visually impaired. Not by True. any means. Yeah. Um, because it kind of like whenever it was like dropped, I was like, oh, wait, did I miss a beat? Was no. that for you, too? Were you like, wait, he is visually impaired or are they like, oh, you're visually impaired? No, I, it kind of it checked out because I did notice in the beginning. I was like, his eyes are very, very like, yeah, but I didn't know. OK, I didn't get the hints until they said it. That's OK. OK. <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> They, they have to explain a lot in this. <laughs> they do. They do. And um, so he's just out on a walk with his dog, Mercy, and the dog is uh, stealing the show, I would say. Deserves like a dog Oscar of some kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, just a yeah. giant pig's foot. Just a di- giant <laughs> pig's foot. And uh, yeah, and then uh, they they walk back home and he discovers his dad has fallen from the house and the then second and floor. flown right up to heaven. Yes, exactly. Once you fly from a house onto the ground, you fly immediately back up to heaven. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it works. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they uh it's uh that's like very sad, it's whatever. And then we get like the police involved and the police are like, we're doing an investigation. They're so and, nosy. Yeah, we're asking a lot of questions. We're in your in your personal space and then and then, like, suddenly she's just like, am, am I a suspect? Which is, am I, am I on trial here? Listen, <laughs> if you guys are out here committing crimes and yeah. a police stops you, the first thing that you should not say is, am I a suspect? Because right then and there, yeah. you're a suspect. Right. Yes. If, if I've learned anything have you ever been close to or adjacent to a murder yeah i think you know which one <laughs> yeah because um, so have you exactly because i bought weed from this person right but if like, that ever like came to you and days the police... before the murder happened <laughs> the police were like hey so um, we're going to ask you a few questions. We're going to sit you down. And by the way, we're just going to like treat this as like a murder trial. I mean, as, as like a murder investigation, as we do with all of our investigations. And uh, then we're going to go into questions. She's like, am I a suspect? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> just tell. That's called a red flag. It is. That's like three. That's you not just, just to, one. You just have to be like, okay, this is protocol. Cool. Understand. Get it. Sure, didn't, let's go. Didn't think about it before. 
because this is a whirlwind and my husband just died. But yes, cool, great. This is your protocol going along with it. Word salad. <laughs> yeah. You just word salad it and you just get through as if you did nothing wrong. But right. Sandra is brought up on murder charges. Yes. In France. And um, they, have an, they have an interesting um, trial system. It involves baguettes, believe it or not. <laughs> I forgot the baguettes. What's the baguettes? There's not. There's okay. Not. <laughs> As I wouldn't, I was like, I thought that was serious, but I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> we have costumes. Yeah, we have bread. We have bread. And we also have like anybody's allowed to like talk whenever they want to. Just so wild. Yeah. If you're not American, like listening to this. This is how our trial system goes down. You keep your mouth shut. Everybody is required to keep their mouths shut unless they are called upon to talk by the uh-huh. judge. And right. the judge doesn't do a lot of talking. Mm-mm. It does a lot of listening and a lot of judging. <laughs> and um, hey, there's you a start... lot of interjecting in this. It's like, I mean, yeah. yeah, but I'm going to let you finish. It's a very Kanye. Event. Also, it's very Kanye, right? It's like... <laughs> And it's a very like, also, there's so much speculation and conjecture invited into the equation that I was just like, what are we doing here? Also, so, so, so sexist. It's sexist. It's bias. It's a probably very, um, you know, very indicative of maybe the French times um yeah which, which I, I don't know what goes on those. i don't know what goes on in france modern day but i've been there and i still don't understand yeah maybe it's like a largely like masculine oriented country which you know it probably is because they are going through like similar problems that we are with like with like males and uh all the things that threaten males and men <laughs> <laughs> And how men react whenever that has, like, you know, whenever it's threatened and right. stuff like that. It's Everybody f- gets it. But we, Yeah, but we are preaching to the choir at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And so it's an all female choir. So you are allowed to hate them if you're a man. Exactly. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that threatens you and you're angry, and then uh, you should just probably ask to join the choir. You should accidentally fall out of the third floor of your house. Yes. Oh, it's um, fine. I'm not going to stop you. Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So Sandra, she is brought on trial. She is having to bear all this like personal embarrassment to everyone. And while her son is there in court. Her son is there listening to everything. And we, there's so many very like meticulous details and uh, did she do it didn't she do it um what else could have happened very law and ordery it is a very good who done it though it's a who done it it's a who done it the acting phenomenal oh john so convincing the details of the case i was going to tell you that yes while there was a lot of talking those details, they spared no expense. I actually was like, this is real. They took this from a real headline. I was like, this is this is from a case. This is a real case, and we're watching the news. It felt like <laughs> a real case. I was like, they did a very, very good job. Yeah, because whether or not, because even if you're like still trying to figure out whether or not Sandra did it, she's the one on trial, and right. all these things are coming against her, and she's handling it pretty well. She's a wordsmith, mind you. She's somebody who does create story she's a novelist that's true is i think that is such good storytelling because you're like this lady she can spin yarns i don't even know what that expression is but i think right now is the right time to use it (laughs) i think it's a very apt time to use that expression spinning yarns is that right it's she's spinning yarns she i still don't know what it means but it sounds good (laughs) (laughs) she's spinning yarns and spitting rhymes Oh, she is spitting rhymes. The, yeah, well, they couldn't actually spit the rhymes because I'm plagiarism, you know, copyright. Yeah, exactly. But she's like really holding her own in this courtroom. And she's like very much we the, the way the movie is portraying her and as the pieces are discovered, 
are the pieces are kind of put together and like the onion is un unlayer dislayering, if you yeah. will. Yeah. He's it's the unrobing. Movie, the onion is unrobing. unrobing. The onion, the onion is fully robed at first, and then <laughs> yeah. it walks into the room and disrobes. It just starts taking off articles of clothing. <laughs> and then we're like, whoa, onion. Where'd you get them tickle bitties? <laughs> I said, whoa, onion, dial it back. <laughs> yeah. It's a Tuesday morning. Yeah, like this is 2023. Um, it, so, um, yeah. So Sandra is sort of, <laughs> the movie paints her to be like kind of a manipulator. They really do. In that, and they do a very good job at it. Yeah, because we do dive into like these recorded, the husband was discovered that, he is recording their conversations and interactions and it is brought into the courtroom and we get into this whole enactment of it. And like, she is definitely manipulating. She is for sure. But also I do like how strong willed in that recorded argument she was because yes. Yeah. I well, also, yes. I was, yes. I was on her. I was okay. I heard what he said, but I also heard what she said. And I said, who's yes. right here. No, I don't know. Completely on, on that side as well. Cause I'm just I had like, no clue who was right in that argument. Cause this big pivotal argument scene is recorded and shown to the courtroom, but we see it in real time because of the magic of movies. Yes. And, um, they are having a daytime drunken, uh, spat yeah as a couple that's a she good and her word, husband spat. it starts out as a spat yeah and um nothing that can't be resolved in a few minutes no just but, use your words and, uh, <laughs> and uh, she it's they're they're having an argument about equity within a relationship yeah as, never a good thing to have i think well no but it does happen all the time and i think that's where I, the movie was like, okay, this is a really good movie. Cause it's like, they're not arguing about something tiny no. or this or that. Cause people in relationships for over time who have deep relationships, they argue about equity. Yeah. And they, that their issue is always equity. And so whether it's emotional or whatever, uh -huh. like that's all, that's what this whole movie hinges on. And yeah. So she, is being attacked emotionally by her husband who is recording it without her knowledge. And, um, I she would say is, he's goading her a little bit. I would say so too. And if she takes the bait and she is obviously the type that doesn't let an argument go, mm -hmm. she is down for the fight at all times. Yep. And she's sharp. Oh, as a tack. She's sharp. She gets right to the core of it right away. And that's like, but she is influencing and manipulating and trying to coerce or make him think a certain way. Yeah. Or see a different reality than what there actually is, I think. I agree. Because also, can you hear that? Oh, it's a little, it's a little meow wolf. Oh, it, it is nonstop. It is. It is just <laughs> like the character in this movie. She just keeps on going. Yeah. She's like, you know, I could let this go, but no, I'm not going to not until you hear me. <laughs> yeah. But I think she does like an amazing job. The Sandra Hewler, this actress, because she, she really did. I don't know who she is, but I was like, Carol, I said work. Yeah. I was like, you're talking and you seem like a real person. She was really good. Yeah. She was really good in this role. Yeah, and she's the very way she's, believable too. She's not yeah. like, I, and yeah. I don't. Okay, when I say this, I want everybody to hear me. Okay? okay, hear me. I'm hearing. She's one of those people that just looks normal. She's not. Uh, she's not overdone. She's not yeah. this. She's not this bombshell person down the street. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she's ugly or anything. She just looks like a normal person, and I think it was brilliant casting because she has an. Ev it. She has an every person quality right and it makes yeah. me want to side with somebody who is more relatable and you can looks see yourself relatable. Then. and right. and yeah every i think everybody's been in this argument with a partner if they have a partner or whatever where you're having this argument sometimes you're fighting with yourself in the mirror i've done it <laughs> i do it all the time <laughs> and but like 
The way she talks, though, she's deliberately trying to convince him of something. And yes, she is. Which is interesting to me. And uh, the uh, the fight uh, culminates. culminates into him really trying to get the goat with her. And uh, he gets the goat. Oh, he so sure she, does. She allegedly, because we don't see it, slaps him. He throws some things around. And then he starts slapping himself in the face. And that's all her testimony. Yep. Because there was no one there to witness it. It's all from her. It's Mm -hmm. all just a very one sided. He's dead. He can't speak. Ghosts don't talk. No, they do not. Not unless it's through a Ouija board or a hand, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Also go. uh, That's a reference to one of our earlier episodes. uh, Talk to me. uh, Talk to me. Uh, Go and watch that. I bet you we could ask him through that hand. I bet we could. You can just go shake that little porcelain hand and be like, hey, <laughs> let us know your side of the but story. But if there's one lesson we can take away from the movie, talk to me is that you can't believe the dead. No, 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 no. They are always lying. Lies. Speaking in riddles, just full of lies. <laughs> lies and riddles. <laughs> and creepy old men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So back to um, an angel has fallen. That's what it's called now. Yeah, it's called an <laughs> angel hath fallen. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, and so Sandra Hewler, she's like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I didn't do it, and all that. And so lots of time goes by, and this uh, this this child of hers is going to be brought to the witness stand. Yeah. And so apparently in France, there's like a whole court-appointed guardian for this child who like lives with them or Also, something. can we talk about her or them or they? I have no clue. Yeah. How this person identifies work they were they were serving looks and serving face oh the angles john the angles were crazy very androgynous i love yeah. i liked it a lot yeah this is a so the the character's name is jenny beth played no no the actress's name is jenny beth and she plays marge berger marge what a name marge um so she if you're is, french and that's a popular name in your country comment down below yes great for you but uh, <laughs> she's she's definitely just like a totally um into this child for now and the court like she's like this like liaison from like whatever to the court she's a court appointed employee she's a tattletale this she's a tattletale is. yeah she's a court appointed <laughs> snitch nothing <laughs> is in confidence with this person and uh, so the child is like, hey, so I know like my whole testimony's coming up, but like, I don't want my mom here right now. So you can like get rid of her for me. And she's like, done. And then she's like, hey, moms, uh, you got to go. And she's she like, and she strong, strong arms her and throws her out into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, Daniel, are you sure you want me to go? Because I can just like stay in the other room or whatever and like leave you alone. And he's like, no, get out of here. And then she's like, okay. So she gets into a car and cries for a while. And then he's like, he's like, okay, now I'm going to set forth my own agenda. Yeah. And then we see him take some pills and then we see the dog taking those pills, taking those pills. (laughs) And then the dog next morning is dying. Oh, the way his tongue (laughs) was out of his face. Okay. So my brain here, whenever we get to this dog dying scene, is like, oh, that's alarming, but can't be real. But it was. How? Oh, it was. How was it real? How was it real, Travis? How was it not real? But how was it not real? I can't answer either of those questions. I thought it it was real. You thought it was fake? It's a movie, so why would it be real? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think they actually poisoned the dog. Like I'm talking about filmmakers here. Do you think they did? I mean, How- crazier shit has happened. There have been animals actually killed for the sake of movies. Cannibal I know. Holocaust. Stop. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. So, but this movie, it does cut away from the dog, but at also times, uh, in uh, at, other, at, other, at other times, it does not cut away. And this dog is looking like it's in a lot of pain. Did you think that it was a real? I don't know. I tried looking it up on the internet and like there's nowhere. 
there's only like collider things. I don't know where it is. Where is the article that says that this dog was wrongfully done during the making of this movie? I don't know, but that's crazy if, because I was like, that dog's a good actor. <laughs> dogs are animals. I truly think if anything, if anything, you think, dog there's a dog was... out th- you think there's a dog out there that can like make its tongue go like that? No, I think I, this is what I'm trying to say. If anything, they definitely sedated that dog for this seat because it was not CGI and right. that is too good. And I'm just uh, like, I'm like, maybe they, maybe they tranquilized it for a time and then they had like the actors just like acting around it or maybe they like anest- anesthetized it. I don't know. That dog was out. It was. It the was. dog was out and coming to and scared. Yeah, it was weird. I, I didn't actually put that much thought into it until now that we're talking about it. I did. Right. I, I was like rewinding it. I was like, what is going on here? This is not a dummy. Like, this is not a mannequin. This is not a puppet. No. And if that is CGI, that is literally no, the best CGI I've ever seen. There's no CGI going I know. On. That's what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> saying if it were, that is the best CGI yeah. I'd it's, ever seen because it's too real. And is it inhumane to tranquilize a dog for a shot for a movie? Who knows? In different countries. Like, that's so crazy. Any, anyway, the the dos, the dogster goes the dog, to this dog. The dog. Yes, it does. For having to go through that because that was very real. Yeah. They did, they did something to that dog. Um, so congrats for them. <laughs> But how did you feel about that scene? So the the kid uh, drugs the dog. The dog comes to, and Throws then up. The dog has. I mean, not the dog. The child. The kid has a realization that his mom is telling the truth about his dad trying to commit suicide at one point. Yeah, because uh, this dog had lapped up the vomit the dad's vomit after he had vomited up his pills and then had a similar reaction. And so the kid was just doing another yeah. experiment. This is why we needed that placeholder experiment. We did. We did. Why can I not remember what that is? I'm so mad at myself. I know that. Who cares? <laughs> but, uh, so the, the, yeah. So the dog proves that yes, the mom is being truthful about the dad's, uh, uh, attempted suicide in the past which corroborates her whole thing to him and he he um does his testimony alone and he reveals to the court that his dad was like hey so um one day your dog is going to be like dead and stuff and like goes off on this tangent and he like tells the audience that the dad was talking about himself and was like trying to prepare him for being without a dad um, after he might kill himself. And then they're like, okay, cool. Acquitted. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Um, we are left with what, like a couple minutes of this, like, there's like a, there's a Chinese food place, uh, bit of a celebration for her yeah. being acquitted with her lawyer and those who are closest with her while her son is at home. Yeah. He does tell the mom when she gets home, though, because this is at the end, he was like, I was scared for you to come home, which is not a good sign. Um, so maybe he knows something we don't. And then also um, she goes, me too. Um, and then she goes into her room on the comfiest looking day bed and the dog mm-hmm. hops up on that day bed and lays down next to her mm-hmm. and the credits roll. So who's the real hero here? The dog lapping up vomit and then having a reaction. Marge. Marge, I think Marge is the real hero here. <laughs> Marge is the real Marge Berger with that, with that, that haircut, face. that face and that haircut. I mean, if I had that face and that haircut, I would have a lot of problems solved for me. Yeah, hero. You would be a hero. Yeah. Queero. Shiro, even. Whatever you want to call it. I would call it Shiro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the one I identify that way. <laughs> and then um, the credits roll, and then that's the end of the movie. And you're Travis. still left wondering, did she or didn't she? And I we have are, a fun yeah. fact about this, actually. Oh. The director of this movie never told her the actress playing what's her face uh-huh. uh, Sandra whether or not 
the character was guilty or innocent only to play the role as innocent. Interesting. You're supposed to be left wondering if she did or didn't do it. And yeah. I will say that's very effective because at the end, when she is on that day bed and that dog pops up, I'm like, what really happened? Because they you never, never know. actually get to the bottom of it. You never know. And you're not supposed to know, I think. And it's nope. just like, she was obviously very good at spinning webs, spinning webs and talking and convincing people of ideas around her. That was very demonstrated on purpose. Yeah. And she employs those same tactics from her argument with her husband in the courtroom. Yes, she does. And she's very good at it. She's very good at it. And she's a storyteller by nature. So there you go. Also, the people around her, like her lawyer is fully in love with her. Right. There's some. And she knows it. And she uses that. She does use it. But I mean, innocent people who are smart could be like, yeah, I need to do this to get to there. That. Like, despite having done it or not. But guilty people also would be like, I need to do this to get to there. Yeah. Every single, every single thing in this is so, it's like, it feels like the character definitely planned things out before. It seems calculated. All of her movements, everything she says, she does very well at playing innocent, though, if she's guilty. Yeah. We don't know. We never know. Yeah, and like, of course, she's acting defensive because she's on the defense. Yeah, either so. she's defending her innocence or she's defending uh, herself against going to prison. Yeah, and also it's like you don't really understand what she stands to gain by killing her husband, though. I mean, like she what gains is, what like some people have things to gain when they kill their spouses. Sometimes it's just yeah. purely. I mean, down the street, I told you my neighbor killed his wife. Right. And that vehicle is still in the driveway months later That's from crazy. November. Just sitting there. And crime there was nothing, scene? Oh, for sure. There was nothing. They've already done the crime scene thing. They had the crime scene. People come. Did he kill tape. himself? Yeah, he did. Um, so sad. There was a child in the house. Where's that child? Uh, now, it's a lot. It's a lot. The child That's did escape and then go alert the neighbors. Hmm. So it was very messy. Do you guys follow up with that or no? No, I want nothing to do with it. I actually think that house should be torn to the, to the ground. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what's the neighborhood going to do whenever the next person moves in? Like, have a welcome party and just be like, hey, by the way, there was they a murder suicide in here. They replaced those baseboards. I saw the baseboards outside. Wow. And I was like. If they don't disclose this, because I don't know, do you have to disclose that sort of thing? They're supposed, they're, they have, there's a law, you have to. John, I would not, I mean, if the price was right, but <laughs> I probably don't want to move into a home that has become a curse. Yeah. You are walking into a curse. But at the same time, you have bought your house, you have bought, you have bought, you have purchased. Yeah. Your house, like brand new, so there is no ghosts. No, but there is in this one. Yes, there is now. If yeah. it's not them, they've opened a door. They have opened a door. The first of many, I'd say, because you can never. I always think about that. Like I, I usually, I tend to move into older places, and I'm like, what happened here? Well, we all know what happened there. Yeah. Very grim. That's very so grim and i up. don't make any jokes it's actually the first yeah. week after it happened our neighborhood was all eerily quiet and it felt weird yeah weird Ugh. everybody was like because what do you do you're like you see this person out and about and then all of a sudden this insane thing happens and you're like what it could be it could happen at any time no it's so true <laughs> Someone could just snap. And that is what happened. And it's very unfortunate. Yeah. So we don't know if Sandra snapped or not is what we're bringing it back to. But what do you, I feel like the director wants us to draw our own conclusion. So what, what conclusion did you draw? My conclusion? It's so, I think she did it. Me too. 
I think she did it. And I think, I think she, she totally I, did it. And I think she was smart enough to pull it off. Yeah, like by the skin of her teeth. There's no way I believe she's innocent. She was losing and she knows that her son completely saved her. She knows it. Whether yeah. she's innocent or not, she knows that her son's testimony got her off and like she owes him a big old debt. And we're not talking Savage Grace type of debt. She don't know him that type. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I just feel like this movie was overall super well done. Very well done. And it takes place in like two locations. Yeah, and it's a courtroom drama. So like it could be a car she cries in. Yeah, she cries in a car in the dark. There's a courtroom. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Is that German? I have no clue. (laughs) It wasn't German enough, but I just think that, um, I think she totally did it. I I do too. And I want her, I want her to have done it. Me as well. Cause that guy was whiny. Yeah. (laughs) He was whiny and he was like antagonistic and yeah. But she was right when she told him, "Your what you want to do and your failures have nothing to do with me." Yeah, it's like like, and that's such like a funny like, very realistic quality of a fight between a couple. It's like it's tr- because it's all valid. Like you're always putting your own things onto your partner. You're always projecting all these. I was gonna say things. You're like throwing these resentments out. To, to the person who's like closest to you and knows you the the best. And you're always like talking to this person as if you're talking in your internal monologue. So if you talk to yourself really shittily in your internal monologue, that's like, it's just going to come out to your partner at times. Right. And it's like, yeah, this guy was like very self-loathing, very sad, depressed. And is there a chance that he may have actually killed himself? There's a chance, but I still think she did it. I think she did it too. Also, what we didn't talk about is that she had affairs that she would talk to him about. Yeah. She and did. be like, by the way, out of respect to you, I'm totally screwing these people. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely the, that lady over there. Yeah. I've had my face in her lap. Yeah. And uh... brushing away crumbs. It was nothing. Don't worry. So what do you think about that, that element of it? What the gayness? No, but her having an affair and while they're not in an open relationship, her telling him about it. What was her point in doing that? To hurt him? I don't think so. Personally, I think that she's just somebody who's like, I live by my own rules. I'm going to tell you this. You can either like it or not, but it's not going to stop me. Yeah, I don't think it's to hurt him. It's so that she can save face by being honest about it. So she actually is like, well, I told you. So Mm -hmm. I think in a way it is kind of a power play, but also I think her personality is just like, if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It makes sense. And it's sort of like, but it's not an open relationship. She's like, I'm, I'm openly cheating on you. I'm going to open it up. I'm opening the door myself. This isn't, I don't need your help. Yeah, it's like you can come along for this ride or not, but this is this ride is going either way. <laughs> yes, it is. I've already paid. I've already paid for the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I mean, that definitely muddies waters. It certainly does, especially in a case where it's like, oh, your significant other's dead and you're a cheater. Yeah, and then the afternoon that he dies, you're openly flirting with somebody downstairs. Right. So. I don't know. It's okay. Should we do our rose and thorn? Let's do a rose and thorn. Cause I'm just talking at this point. No, I, I want to get to the rose and thorn though, because like there are some good things and I don't want to run through them without us like expressing what our rose. Right. Was. Right. So what would you say your rose is? Um, my rose for sure was, um, I think like the editing was really good. I think the performances were really great. The writing was was really good because you can easily make a courtroom drama really dry and stale and dull. And it's not like this is like the most unique case in the world. Um, Doesn't have to be. Yeah. And so I think I think the writing was really good. The direction was really good. And um, yeah, Sandra Hewler is a, a phenomenal actress. 
Very. And also that kid was really good, too. I was like, how are these tears coming out of this small, tiny child? The pinprick. Somebody in the background was shooting <laughs> BBs at his, at, the, at his back. They're like, act. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so, and also the, the dog was adorable. Very cute. Um, very cute dog. Yeah. And I just thought it was just really well done. That yeah. dog's eyes were the same colors as the kids. I True. don't know what that's supposed to say. Probably nothing, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> So what was, so what was your thorn? Uh, the thorn would probably be, um, you know, I, the fact that I fell asleep during the first try and yeah. I had to get through it a second time. <laughs> um, and it was, um, I, I feel like a thorn was, you know, I'm not going to like crap on the choice to like, leave it up to the audience. I'm not going to do that, but I wanted some, concrete did she do it or not you know what i mean oh I'm like have to something I, something I have, to, I have to disagree i know i, know, I, I wanted something to. i get I'm, it i'm disagreeing with myself at the same time because i'm just like i did enjoy that element of like oh i get to decide to get to choose my own journey here right um but at the same time i want to know what uh what the writer director knows and in their minds yeah yeah i get it but what do you think what was your rose so my rose i'm I'm not even going to pick any petals this time i think my full my rose is going to (laughs) be yeah the petals are all staying on that bit (laughs) they're here to stay (laughs) so my rose for sure is going to have to counter my rose is not knowing i love that aspect which boils down to the whole thing as the writing, 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah, absolutely. I don't even have to go into the acting. Obviously, we know the actors are amazing. Yeah, but yeah. But the writing itself, this was a great story. And I loved not knowing and being able to be like, oh, she did it. She may not have, but we'll never mm-hmm. know. And maybe she won't either because the director will not tell anybody, which I think is cool. Yeah. Which thorn. Uh, yes. My thorn is. I don't I don't care for the flashbacks because I personally mm. don't think they're necessary. I know there was only two of them. There were so only you two. think that we should have been in the courtroom the whole time. I kind of wanted to visualize those things. And I want it because when they're playing, when they are playing the audio, it sounds so crazy because you're like, wow, they're really getting into it. I don't need the visual aspect for me to decide like but i think they yeah. need it so you can see both points because you have to see the fit but to like me, you needed a you needed to like i don't so you needed to break it up from from the courtroom for sure which which is i understand but they could also have shortened the courtroom scenes mm-hmm. and then only had like if you're gonna make that audio be like one of the most key elements in it just do that and then let us and let, as the and let everybody listen. fill in that that those images. Yeah. I, I, I wanted know, to fill I'm, the images in. I don't need their images, but I did appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. I just right. I'm like, it didn't need it. So so what you're saying is like if you're gonna lean on flashbacks, do it at other times and then have this big turn. Yeah. Um with the with the audio file, just be all of them listening to it. Listening and the expressions of the people in the courthouse. That makes total sense to me, and I That's totally what I would agree have loved. with you. I would have loved I, that. Yeah, because then it just like takes it in, in like it's it's up in the air, all around. Like like who's throwing what, who, what actions are being done at this yeah. time, what expressions are, like what what dynamic is like the listener is totally going to fill that in. Yeah. So oh, that'd uh, be really good. You should, you should be a director. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still think that their choice to do it was great because yeah. they did cut away when the fighting and the physical elements happened. Right. Cause you really don't know what happened, but, but that would have been a completely different sort yeah. of a heavier game changer while it is like a lengthy scene to just like cut to people listening to it and their reactions to it. And just hearing the audio would have been, genius yeah i think so but that's me nitpicking like truthfully that's that's a tiny thing so that was a good one that's a good one Ooh, um very great 
And uh, oh, we should mention that this is uh, directed by Justine Trier. Uh, and she um, is a director. She did films. a wonderful she did a wonderful job. Like, seriously, like yeah. no joke. Yeah, she um, in the past. Oh, well, she just cleaned up with the Golden Globes. Oh, for this movie. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. And um, she seems like she uh, definitely uh, knows, knows art. Yeah. <laughs> She's experiencing high art all the time. <laughs> and uh, so she wrote, oh, whoops, sorry. Um, so she, her filmography includes uh, Anatomy of a Fall, obviously. Uh, in 2019, she did, she did a movie called Sybil. Yes, I wanted to watch that. Uh, not not high praise. Oh, um, in 2016, she did In Bed with with Victoria, which has 83 percent Rotten Tomatoes. And then in 2013, she did a movie called Age of Panic, which has 100 percent Rotten Tomatoes. Oh shit! We never should have gone through those Rotten Tomatoes. I know, but it's also like she she is she is an art house film directoire s. And now, now she has a palm door that. under her belt and golden globes under her belt for this movie. Yeah, she's particular. got a palm door on the front of her house. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to put this palm door on the front. This and, is the uh, entrance. <laughs> this palm door is the entrance. And uh, good for her. Yeah. She ate. Should we? Uh, so what do you think out of, out of 10? So, okay. Mm -hmm. Out of 10 bowl haircuts on a very androgynous court appointed um babysitter what would you give this i would give it i would give this thing i would give this old gal i would give this old gal an eight sure you know what i mean yeah it's like a like no to no fault of its own but just for my personal preference yeah that's okay yeah, like I could respect it as like this great masterpiece. However, um, is it? It's palm door material in a lot of ways. Yeah, I would say it's yeah. like if you get the palm door at Cannes, you're just internationally acclaimed immediately from then on out. And I didn't quite see it for this one. However, I did hot take. I, yeah, I did see, <laughs> I did see it. I did see it at times. I was like, "Ooh, yeah," because you know what else got the Palm Door? The movie Parasite. Um, you know what I mean. Still haven't watched it. You I'm haven't sorry. watched Parasite? No, I keep meaning to. Oh my to. god, uh, still Travis. haven't. You're We're gonna... watching it next week, then. Okay, can I tell you something? When things start blowing up and everyone talks about <laughs> them, I can't watch it. The same happened with Bird Box. I was like, absolutely not. No, Bird Box isn't the same thing. Bird I Box know is it's not. not the same thing. I know it's not. But when Parasite came out and literally <laughs> all I heard was people talking about Parasite, I was like, I can't, I just, I can't do it right now. And I no, just still have it. Parasite is amazing. I'm sure it is. And Parasite is it's the same director as um as the movie The Host. Which you know I love. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, girl, you should have said that in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like Parasite won the Palm Door. It's it's masterful storytelling, I would okay. say. Okay, fine. Well and this here, it's it's definitely reaching for masterful storytelling and it's achieving a great deal. Um and I I can see um Juliet. Uh, oh wait, what's her name again? Lewis. Julia Lewis. <laughs> I can see uh, this director, uh, Justine. Uh, I can see her achieving that over time. And uh, she's in the right direction. But do I see it as, as right now? Not so much. But congrats to you. I can totally see it. We can see your future. And you're going to get there, hunty. Yeah, give her and, her roses. Yeah. Right. loved it by the way yeah love that for you <laughs> but so so travis out of um out of okay so out of um eight little glistening pills in a vomit pile would you give this 
would I give it an eight or 10? 10 out of 10. Out so of 10. Out of 10 glistening, chewed up pills <laughs> in a vomit pile. Um, I will absolutely, I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a nine. Oh, wow. I was invested the whole time. Yeah. I was invested the so whole was time. I. So was I. I was like, I said, work, go. I'm like, I love the story. Yes, it's courthouse drama, but everything tied together so well in this neat little package, this neat, neat, neat little package. It did. It really did. It's not getting a 10 for me, though, just because like, I don't know. I, I actually. If maybe, left in the hands of other actors, this I don't know if this movie would have done so good. Oh, no, it would have been a lifetime movie. Uh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. But I just think, yeah, it it works. It does. It does really work. It's super solid. It's, I highly recommend this. If you guys want, mm-hmm. watch this movie. It is heavy. It's super. It is. It's very dark and it doesn't have reprieve. You know what I mean? It doesn't there's have like. literal to no comedy. Uh, there's no levity in the dark. There the is... only comedy is the 50 Cent song playing in the background constantly. <laughs> And yeah. I think maybe that's why it doesn't get a 10. Cause I, I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't buy it. And like, why that? And like, I really don't know. Yeah, and they did so try weird. to write it off as like, he loves the beat. And I'm like, there's better beats. There are so many better beats. There's better beats. This doesn't have to be it. It but- feels like maybe that's what could have been afforded in the yeah. budget. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, this it. is the only one that clears uh yeah that is what's it. the rotten tomatoes rotten tomatoes is a 96 percent there we comatometer. go good there for go. you i actually this i actually saw i thought it said 97 when on voodoo which i hate i hate it too but yeah it, i still i wasn't gonna let it sway my opinion because john we have watched some real stinkers that have yeah. had high rotten tomatoes i know and also some like really low ones that were kind of good but... yeah, that actually deserved better so yeah. and the audience I don't... yeah i don't know i don't i don't trust these things but just for the flavor of it all for the tomato flavor for the yeah, pasta yeah, the, sauce the acidity of it all yes the acidity which can be a little tangy and uncomfortable in the stomach yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, 90% was the audience score. So oh. it's like very much everybody loves it. That's a great it's, movie. What do you think about Oscar season? Mm, this is going to be a tough one for real. Oppenheimer Ooh. is probably going to win everything. Um, you think so? Did you watch probably. the Golden Globes? I did not. Did they sweep it? Mm-mm. Oppenheimer? Didn't mm-hmm. sweep the Golden Globes. Oppenheimer did did achieve some Golden Globes, and then it was Anatomy of a Fall, and then I haven't watched the rest of the Golden Globes. <laughs> I think I don't know who's going to go. Um, I don't know who's going to get Best Actress. I don't even want to pretend at this point because I love how many... the Oscars do dark horses. They yeah, always yeah. love the dark horse. They're like, "Ooh, right. we're different. That's we're so... we're better than all the rest of you." <laughs> <laughs> Even though there are clear winners that they should have given it to. There are clear winners. I feel like obviously the Billy Gilish song is going to win. Yeah. Like the Barbie song is definitely going to win. Right? Um, it's a good song. It is a good song. So good song. Good message. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess once we get closer, we can kind of make our bets on it. Yeah, and then once if you lose, yeah. I will send you a batch uh, of a, a rotsker i will i will send you a bag of cat turds a bag of cat turds <laughs> and molded into the shape of an oscar yeah mm-hmm. i would take that would you <laughs> yeah just like put a glaze on it like put it in, an, in enamel so i don't have to smell it sure oh that would yeah. be genius um, dip it have it like, dipped high art piece would be <laughs> the cat, cat shit oscar like, Cat shit <laughs> from the litter box. Yeah. Squeezed into the shape of a rough Oscar. Honestly, we should do it. Dipped in enamel. Or what is that? What is that stuff that like resin? Pour? Resin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dipped in resin. And then bronzed. And then bronze. So you For your benefit. See it. <laughs> so, <there> you go. <laughs> so all you see is the bronze, but we know. The secrets out, everybody. The Oscars you see (laughs) at the awards show are just bronze-covered cat shit. Yeah. 
the secret there. is it's actually cat shit. <laughs> 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 which is an art piece in and of its own yeah uh travis we did it we always do it where can you find us you can find us at mean girls interrupted at gmail.com gmail. where you can email us you can email uh it. you can find us on it's instagram it. at mean girls interrupted you can find us at the same name on youtube right YouTube. is it the same name yeah i actually have no idea um <laughs> there is a twitter account that doesn't get used because twitter is a cesspool it's a um, cesspool of alt-right it's uh, or, stuff and porn it's a rotten place <laughs> you shouldn't go there um but do you you know what if that's what you love i can't yeah. stop you uh, yeah and i think you know, just like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, everybody. I, we do this for fun, for funsies, for us, and for some of you, because some of you yeah. listen and some of you tell. So Yeah, we did our first fan request last week. Remember yeah, that? I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed a fan request. A savage Grace. Yeah, even if we don't like it, the fact that you guys recommended it <laughs> is going to make us like it a little better. Whenever you said the the fact that even if we didn't like it, I was like, wait, did we like it or not? <laughs> we didn't like it. <laughs> not really. And no. we haven't heard back from that jackhole. Well, hi, Jack. Oh, thank you once again. Yes, jackhole. You're amazing. So, and please tell us what you want to watch. Yeah. What, please tell us what you want to watch next and then tell us to watch it. Yeah. After you watch it. Mm-hmm. Travis. John. I'm going to have to see you at the movies. Um, roll the credits. Roll the credits, you. Um, Subaru that I saw driving away. Mm. Like, why did... I mean, gay people love Subarus. Anyway. Gay people love them some Subarus. We have a Subaru. <laughs> we right. are living our best lesbian life. Yep. And... Uh, so roll the credits, Subaru. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.